What the heck is a facilitator? I just want to work with a real estate agent. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think the terms we use really confuse a lot of people. But unfortunately, not only are consumers confused by those terms, but sometimes even real estate agents are as well. I hate to say that. So I do get that question a lot. What is this facilitator thing? So in the state of New Hampshire, we have an agency disclosure, brokerage disclosure that is required that all real estate agents provide to a consumer upon first meeting. I talked about that disclosure here, I think, or maybe here. You can click the link and watch it. But this is a required disclosure. Until you get to the point where you actually hire an agent to represent you, that agent is going to be acting in the role of a facilitator, meaning they do not represent you, they do not represent the seller. They basically, if you want to think about it this way, they basically represent just the marketplace. So a facilitator in the state of New Hampshire is a real estate licensee who is providing services to a consumer without any representation. So when you're working with an agent who is a facilitator and Almost all the agents you're ever going to work with in New Hampshire are a facilitator first because they stay in that role until you actually sign a buyer agency contract or you hire them to list your property. Then they become a listing agent or a buyer agent. But so as a facilitator, when you're working with an agent that is a facilitator, understand that you, the consumer, you are representing yourself. You should never tell that agent anything that you wouldn't say if the other side, the seller or buyer, was standing right next to that agent. The agent that's acting as a facilitator has an obligation to do full disclosure, has an obligation to act as a licensed real estate agent should. They can write an offer, they can certainly show you a property, they can attend inspections. What they can't do as a facilitator is advocate or negotiate on your behalf. A facilitator can provide comparables of properties for you to look at, but you need to interpret what those comparables are telling you, the story. They can't do that for you. A facilitator in some cases can offer confidentiality, although that is very rare because it's a little bit difficult to do. The agent that you're working with in the facilitator relationship owes you no fiduciary duties. So always remember, when you're working with that agent, you're basically representing yourself in the transaction. And there are some buyers that can totally represent themselves if they have a lot of experience, etc. But most buyers, especially first-time home buyers, would certainly benefit from buyer agency. So thus, the agent you're working with has done the brokerage disclosure that's required and you've not elected to enter into an agency relationship. You've not hired them. You've not signed a contract. You're working with them simply as a facilitator. And finding one agent that you really feel comfortable with that's done the appropriate disclosures. They may start out as a facilitator, but anytime prior to PNS, you can certainly elevate into an agency relationship. And that is definitely the way to go. So I'm going to talk about buyer agency and seller agency and dual agency in another video, but this is part two of the agency disclosure video series. I've linked part one a little bit ago, and it's all about facilitator. So yeah, it sounds weird, but that is a real estate agent. So hopefully that clarifies what exactly or what the heck a facilitator is. If you have any other suggestions or any questions or comments, please leave them down below, and I will definitely get back to you. Have a great day.